Hello. Today I'm going to show you how you can use the form change processing workflow within Connect Us in order to recommend a change to one of our department forms. In order to access the form change processing workflow, we'll need to go into the credentialing section of Connect Us. By clicking on credentialing, we'll see a section on the left hand side that says documents and then there's a section in there that says form change processing. Underneath that is a form library which will contain all of the relevant forms if you don't have a copy on your computer or that you can otherwise access somewhere else. So you'd be able to go in here and obtain a document from there. Uh, but we'll go into the form change processing library now. And in order to add a document, we'll just click on add document down here. Once this is clicked, it brings up a prompt for you to browse to the document. So I'll click on browse and then I'll navigate to a document that I've got. Uh, we'll choose this draft form 570 and then I'll hit OK. And now what this is going to bring up is some key information that is required for the form to process. The form will not go on to the next step, uh, which is supervisory approval, until you fill in each one of the pieces of information on the left here. So you can name the document. So if you want to change it to Form 570, um, you can do so there. Please follow the, uh, the naming convention for the actual file that's stored within the Form Library section. Um, it makes it easier when it finishes up so that it copies over the correct file. If you go down to Priority, uh, you'll see that there is uh, the ability for you to choose between a statutory change, a board request, or formatting change. Let's say that I'm doing a formatting change here. Um, and then I'll input the form number and then make an explanation of the change. So uh, let's say the form has two fields for name. Uh, and then there will be, if there are any web changes for this form, so let's say needs to be posted on both the nursing and med pages. Uh, then you would select the board from a drop-down list. This list has all of the boards that are uh, covered by our agency. I'm going to be using a, um, a testing board here, uh, but that will be uh, deleted once this goes live. So you'll have to choose your actual board here. That determines the list of people who get notified, and the item underneath that has the notification type. It says board affiliates only, list only, or board affiliates and list. And then there's a section down here that says list staff to notify. Uh, if you just want to notify the people who are affiliated with your board, click on board affiliates only. If there's anybody in addition to the people who would normally be receiving a notification about this who need to know, you would put them in here. So let's say that we are doing this for the Board of Nursing and we needed to notify their executive director, Dan Williams. Uh, we would choose board affiliates and list we go into list of staff to notify, click on browse, it's this little uh, address book looking thing down here, and then type in Dan's last name. And it'll search through all of the people who have the last name Williams in the agency. You would double click on Dan or you'd click on add down here once you've got his name highlighted and then click OK. That would add Dan to the list of people who will be notified when this uh, workflow finishes. Uh, there's also a section down here for expedite form and this is only available to supervisors and the division administrator. Uh, all staff will be able to see this, but only the supervisor and the division administrator will have this successfully processed if it is checked. So a normal staff person, um, if you check this, nothing's going to happen. There's no reason for you to check it. Uh, once I've entered in all of the relevant information for this, I just hit save and it will save the document here. Uh, now I can see form 570. And if I scroll over to the right, I can see that the forms process is in progress and it has assigned a due date. The, the initial due date is set as the day that the form is submitted and then it processes and it uh, does some math and creates an actual due date for the current step, which is the supervisor level. And as you can see, I just got an email here for the supervisory level of approval. This is what your supervisor will see when the approval comes into them. Uh, notifying them of the staff member who submitted the request, what form it's for, and tells them to complete the review by um, 
two days from the time that you submit the form. If you do submit this on a Thursday or a Friday, it will factor in the weekend and bump it to a Monday or Tuesday, respectively. Um, so all they would need to do then is go to where they can access the form. If they click on this, it'll take them right to the item that you uploaded. And you'll be able, they'll be able to make edits in here as they see fit. When they save the form, it'll save it directly to the site so that there is a live document that's being worked on. Um, and then also in that email is a link to a approval section. And if they click on this, it'll take them to a little approval box where they can either approve of the item or reject it. If they reject the item, they would type in a reason for rejection in this box down here. Um, so say uh, there are actually not two name fields. If there weren't two name fields, they could type that in, hit reject, and it would send you back a notification saying why the request that you submitted was rejected. Um, let's say they are going to approve this though, they would just hit complete task, and then it'll go on through the process. Uh, at intervals throughout the process there are reminders that are programmed in where it checks to see if the approver has completed the section or has not and if they have uh, managed to complete it on time it doesn't send them a reminder email if they haven't it will give them a, a little alert telling them hey go back into the system and look at this see um, if you can uh, make the adjustments necessary I have uh, fast forwarded through the process a little bit completed all the necessary approval steps and as you can see, uh, this is the email that you will receive at the end of the whole process. Uh, this email will list all of the people who uh, need to have notification in the two box. Right now it just says me, but when uh, one actually goes through, it'll have a much longer list in here of uh, relevant staff to notify. And since I checked that I wanted to use the, uh, the custom list as well, it has included uh, Dan Williams in the notification. There are links in the items saying that the requested change has been approved and an updated form has been copied to the form library. If I were to click on this uh, link, the first one, it's going to open up the file uh, with all of the necessary uh, edits and approvals. And if I open up the link here to the form library, it'll take me directly to the form library and I'll be able to view it um, in order of uh, most recently modified. That's uh, pretty much it for the form change processing workflow. If you have any questions or would like to make any recommendations, uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, we're always uh, interested in, uh, in process improvements. Thank you. Have a great day.